Hey everyone and welcome to today's Blitz session. As you can see here, I'll be playing some Blitz Chess on Chess.com. So let's get into some games. I'll just wait for somebody to accept my seek and then we are all good to go. Uh, as to the openings I play, I think, yeah, I'll probably play something like London as white and you know, maybe Accelerate Dragon Benko as black, white or laziness and anything else, but it works well for me, so why not? Uh, let's see if there are any six already out there that maybe I can accept. Uh, okay, it seems not at the moment. You know, I kind of picked a time where not too many people playing, but, you know, I can always play one opponent over and over and over again, I guess. It'll you know, always be fun. So, okay, it's taken quite a while. Hmm. Okay, well, let's be a little bit patient. Uh, well, I guess while waiting, I can remind you that if you are enjoying my video content, you know, if you've been watching a few other videos, then make sure to show your support by subscribing. You know, it helps me. It also helps me to help you make better and better content with your support. So thanks in advance for that. And, oh, we have an opponent. So let's go. Okay, let's play London. I might play Accelerate London just for some fun. Uh, mouse is a little bit funny at the moment, but not a big problem. So... See what does against Bishop F4. <clears throat> no one talks about this move in different videos in the past, so I'll try not to repeat myself too much for the openings. B5. I think you go like C4 is quite interesting then. Just transposing back to a Benko. Right, D2. G6. Okay, I could go Bishop E2 maybe. Uh, it might go Knight H5 if I'm not careful. So let's just stop that for the moment. Should probably put the queen on c2 as well after d6 just to deal with knight h5 in the future. Yeah, this position is kind of reasonable, I have to admit. I'll go h3. I uh, could go d6 feels kind of wrong though. Maybe I'll just keep the bishop back. But yeah, opening has not entirely gone my way, admittedly. Because uh, c5 on move 2 is the main reason I don't normally play the London system with, uh, with white with this 2 bishop f4 move order. I go like 2 knight 3 first. And yeah, now it's thinking about playing f5. Okay, let's cast along and go king b1. I think that gives the best chances here. Uh, king b1. He'll go a4 and... Okay, maybe just queen to d3, but... I mean, my idea is to go g4 and try to bring the knight around, but of course he plays f5 first. So maybe we'll go rook h, g1 in that case. Mm, yeah, I can tell I'm still a little bit rusty at the moment. Knight 6 Yeah, that's a very annoying move. Uh, incredibly annoying, in fact. I might have to go G4, but that's a pawn sack. Yeah, not playing very well in this game. Uh, it's FE4. Yeah, maybe I have to go... I probably have to go King A1, but position is now very, very bad for white. Yeah, I mean, I probably should... I don't know, maybe Benight D2 also go. I should probably go 5A3 instead. Because, yeah, this is, is really not good at all. I think I'm probably just going to get mated on, uh, yeah, on FB2 very soon. Uh, which is kind of lame. Yeah, in fact, if he takes Bishop G7, I don't have a good defense. I was going to have a good defense to E4, but I would actually be able to take it then. Okay, I'll take. It's Bishop here. Ah, of course, you can do this move order. Yeah. Uh, but is it so bad, actually, if I go Knight H4? Maybe I can make this work. The demon position looks very, very uh, depressing here. On the other hand, he doesn't have 97 because of g4. So, you know, it's not uh, not so easy for him, in fact. You know, if I can get, like, g4, rook e1, bishop to g2, I think that black's position would be very difficult all of a sudden. It'll take some maneuvering, but yeah, if he has to play bishop c8, well, he wants to go g5 and trap my knight, so let's play g4 and stop that. It also stops bishop f6 ideas as well. Or at least makes him ineffective. Uh, as for my plan, well, rook a6 is kind of a weird move, but I guess he wants to go rook e8. Uh, so I could go knight g2 and just improve the worst place piece, but maybe I should go bishop f1 first. Um, yeah, I figured out the best way to coordinate my pieces, and I'm a bit low on time, so I'll go knight g2 first and just blockade. I want to go knight e5. Um, okay, I'll play. Yeah, I'll go rook e1, even though it allows bishop c3. Uh, yeah, I was hoping he indeed would not see it. The position still feels alright for white, but merely the weaknesses are not really ideal here. Um, I'll go rook f1. And my idea is to put the bishop on g3 and try to hold, but 
Of course, it's not the most pleasant uh, defense in the world. Um, so yeah, I guess, yeah, I think that all I can really do is just sit on this position at this point. So I'm a bit behind on the clock as well. So well, I can maybe bring my rook to g2 or to h2. Perhaps this is a constructive plan. Um, yeah, I'll take. I mean, it's not really convinced by this completely by black. Because I have hg6 and, you know, I have bishop d6. So he'll go rook f6 instead. Or he'll sack the exchange. But I'm not entirely sure that this is sound. Um, I could play as king d1. I think that's the best try here. And he can try and give checks and stuff. But rook f1 is, I think, a very good defense. Unless he has some special tactic, but I don't see it at the moment. Maybe I should just play a lot faster. Could have been a little bit sluggish in this game. Could go bishop c3, but then maybe just rook h7 is quite good. Uh, but bishop she threatens knight b2, which is kind of a nuisance, admittedly. Maybe I have to take it, in fact. Yeah, rook d2, ed3. Doesn't actually threaten anything, though. So it gives me a move to try and do something like rook d1. Or I could go knight f5, even. But he's kind of threatening mate, is the only thing. So I kind of have to find something quick, I think. Um, yeah, I'll go... Ah, I just don't seem to have a move here. Let's go g7. But it doesn't even do anything after rook a2. Ah, played so badly this game. Ah, played like a complete idiot. I actually got to, I think, a winning position, but yeah. yeah I'll play him again. Ah, of course, why don't I play Benko? It's crazy. Ah, but okay. Maybe I can play in a delayed version. Yeah, let's just do it. It's not entirely sound to play like this, but I'm going to do it anyway, because whatever. <clears throat> Bishop d2. Yeah, I don't have queen b4 even, so... Yeah, I might have to just retreat the queen, but that kind of admits the whole plan didn't work. So I'll go ab5 instead. Go for some sort of miracle. Yeah, Bishop a6. Rook a3 could be quite a good move for him. Yeah, it's what he played. Let's have queen b4. Rook b3, though, that kind of isn't a good reply, I think. So, maybe it's knight bd7, but okay, it kind of admits that my position is not very good anymore. Well, it wasn't really to begin with. Well, I'll take, and he has a b5, and yeah, then he's just a pawn up for nothing. So, yeah, the whole plan was a bit of a failure, but okay, we'll try and make the best of it. Um, yeah, queen b6. Yeah, defends a pawn and... Okay, maybe knight g4 gives me some compensation or even knight e8. Because I can go knight c7 and at least trade off this knight. Which is sort of his good piece at the moment. Bishop c3. Yeah, I didn't even see bishop c3 was a move. Mm. Yeah, kind of just down a pawn, but good thing is I think I have some practical compensation here. Because my pieces are somewhat active and yeah, I spent... On the time on moves like bishop d2, c3, and rook a3, which, yeah, is a quite significant time investment here. Yeah. It takes, and... Okay, let's go rook fb8, just play normal moves. Because he goes knight d2, well, then I can take, take rook b2 and have some active play at least. So, he goes rook a1, sensible enough move, I guess. c4 is going to play knight d4, which is kind of an annoying move, I think. So maybe I just have to sit on the position somehow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's hard to find a useful move for black in this position. If I only play c4. So maybe I'll just go rook b7 and try to prepare c4. So that knight d4, b c6 at least doesn't hit e7. Yeah, e5 is very annoying here. Uh, so what to do? I could go rook a7 actually and try to just win the pawn. I guess that'll be my choice. But yeah, he just goes a6 and... Well, I do have queen b6, knight b8 actually. I might be able to get the pawn back in fact. 4, knight b8. Yeah, he's trying to attack kingside but it feels a little slow to me. It looks like I might have, yeah, slipped out of the the greatest problems here. Let's see, um... Yeah, let's try and get some queen e8 check at some point. But I don't think it does anything special. If he goes e6, yeah, I would probably just go f5 or something in reply. Position probably is about equal now.
Yeah, he's probably going to keep the tension between the rooks, actually. So that after takes, he can try to get a past A pawn. But his D pawn is a little weak at the moment. So I'm maybe I'll take advantage of. So, okay, I think I have to take here and... Well, I can go knight A6 and threaten knight C7. It actually is kind of unpleasant for white all of a sudden. Uh, queen B2... Interesting question how I should deal with this. I could always play queen f6, but after queen b5. Well, then I have queen a1 and take a3, so that looks alright to me. Unless queen d7 maybe gives him counterplay. One good thing is at least I'm playing a little more quickly this game, which is always nice. So knight c7. Queen b2. Uh, I mean, f6 looks kind of ugly, but otherwise I don't really win a pawn, and I think winning the pawn is more important here. I was going to bring the knight to b4 and have a... Would kind of grip over the position there, I think. Uh, yeah, let's do that. And it's, yeah, not so easy for him to deal with this past C pawn, I think. Uh, just have to figure out the right way to coordinate the pieces, and it should be good. And they can try to improve the position a little bit first, like even... I don't know how exactly I can improve the king side position. I was thinking maybe H5 just to fix the, the structure in place, but... Well, it's the move I'm going to play, even though I'm not sure if it does all that much. I mean, idea is I want to kind of go king f7 without queen h8, so they're hitting the h7 pawn is kind of what I'm going for. Knight h2 feels very suspicious, but he wants to go knight f1. Um, so, okay, let's let's bring the king f7, as I planned before. Um, yeah, let's go queen c6, just offer a trade of queens. Then Jen push this pawn on forward if he doesn't take. Or if queen b8, then, you know, I can play knight a6 and maybe then c4 from there. Or knight d5, even if I want to keep a... Now a bit more centralized, which probably I do, in fact. So yeah, he's going for this, but I think I have queen e4, but yeah, it's kind of getting some checks, but I don't think it's anything too serious. And he's getting low on time, which is very uh, convenient. Uh, so I can just take though, right? Yeah, I'll take. Let's do it. Queen here. Now I'm just happy to trade queens in general, because I'm a pawn up, and my king is a little more open than white's. Uh, so let's go h4. Uh, he has a6 up. I have queen a1. I did not see that in advance, but luckily I have this. And yeah, queen d6. Just play normal moves. Queen d4. d6. Just avoid any checks. Um, I don't think he's threatening anything, so let's do that. Yeah, knight c4 is his one move, but it doesn't really do that much. Uh, let's just keep pushing. Bring the king up. Use the king as a shield, I guess. I'll just bring the king back to be safe. And yeah, he blunders. Okay, so I got a nice comeback win. Let's see if he wants to play again. Okay, um, I'm not going to go d4, actually. Uh, or I will, but I'm going to play it like with knight f3. And Well, if g6, will I go bishop f4? I might go knight c3, actually. I'm going to try and play it like Aronian. With d5, bishop f4, and going knight b5 ideas. Because I did look at this a long time ago. I think I remember some of the ideas. Like, I remember you go, like, h3, and, you know, you, uh... Yeah, kind of play, like, a normal sort of barrier attack, but, yeah, whereas knight is not that great on, uh, on c7, which, yeah, I'm quite happy with. I mean, take some g4 looks so tempting. Um, yeah, let's just do it. Just feels like it should be very good here. And practically, the attack is pretty dangerous, I would say. Uh, if I'd gone queen d3 first, maybe knight e4 would have been a defense. So he takes, but, okay, I could even go knight e5 then, and... You know, just keep the options open here. With whether we go GF5 or something else. 94 feels very suspicious to me for some reason. Probably because I can simply take, actually. Um, yeah, let's just take. And you know, after Queen F5, I have Knight C6 in the worst case if I want to grab a pawn. But I might be able to do better than that. Like, Queen G4 is kind of a tempting move, for example. So is Rook G1, actually. Uh, well, I could also go Knight E4 first. And maybe that's what I should do. Because uh, then I have rook g1 and like I have a lot of threats with queen g4 and stuff. So he goes 96, but then bishop h6 or... His queen is very short of squares actually. I thinking if I could trap it somehow, but I think... I think bishop h6 or queen g4, one of these moves is probably the right one. And queen g4 somehow just feels right to me. So I'm going to play that. Because queen c2, yeah, would have been way too risky. But now I have like f3 threatening to trap the queen and it's... Kind of hard for him to get out of this, I think. Because, uh, well, I'm not quite sure. He has to go h6 maybe, but then f6, queen 7 knight 7 In the worst case, is winning a pawn and opening his king. So, this position strikes me as being very difficult. 
Yeah, it's a question how we should get out of it. Maybe f5. I mean, f5, I have queen h4 in the worst case, I think. But it does mean he has knight f4 after that, so... f5, maybe just queen g3 and just f3 is still a threat to trap his queen simply. So I'm not quite sure how he gets out of this one, in fact. Mm. If he goes bishop e5, I just go bishop e5, f6, queen e6, and yeah, just winning material there as well. But it's still probably his best try, but... I'm going to have queen e7 at the end, he kind of gets made it anyway. Let's go f3. He goes queen h7 is probably his idea. But yeah, now I just take and... Well, the attack down the g file just seems incredibly strong here. Um, let's play rook g3 actually, just keep it safe. Because rook g4, h5, and that might have been a useful move for him. So let's just build up steadily. And just leave him without a good plan. And maybe a bit early for him to resign, but I can sort of understand it. Um, okay, let's play him again. Um, this time I'm going to go with Ben Kodo, pure version. Because uh, I had King's in version. Like, I won the game, but it wasn't really because of the opening, I think. E3, uh, let's go E6 and roll the dice a bit. Like, this line isn't meant to give full compensation, but, you know, it's kind of fun to play Blumenfeld if they don't know what they're doing. And I'm not sure if he really does, actually. Just play the normal moves. Uh, so, castles and, you know, BA6. Ah, of course he goes E4. Uh, that was kind of silly of me not to uh, not to anticipate this properly. But what's the best way to deal with it? Maybe knight e4, take, take, knight e5. Um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult for me. So I might have to go into swindle mode already. Uh, hmm. I could go d4, knight g5, bishop e7. But it feels... The whole thing just feels so bad. I think I'll just go d4 and sort of gamble, I guess. Uh, so... I could take, take. All right, let's try this. I don't think it's very good, but I have to try something here. Uh, queen a5 is an idea now. He does have pc3, and yeah, I completely missed he could do this. And now I think I'm just down a pawn for nothing. So, okay, he's sacking it back, which is kind of an interesting decision. So, take, ah, oh, because he has bishop b5 at the end. Uh, but okay, queen b2, he'll try to uh, be tricky here. I mean, he does have a very good position, but at least here I can sort of, I think, make the case that, well, that at least I might kind of get out of a playable game. Uh, so I can put the queen on d5 next move, and it feels like it should be solid enough. Uh, bishop b3 is a, probably a good move by him. I could go knight e4 in reply, maybe. I mean, I'm threatening knight c3 stuff, which can be a bit annoying. If queen d3, I'm going to go with probably queen d5. So he decides to take, but isn't that just a blunder? After I take a knight c3? What's his idea? I'm not sure if he has one. I mean, he does actually get pretty decent compensation for the exchange, to be fair, but I think this is definitely an improvement over what I had before. You know, queen c5, I just take, and you know, the ending is safe enough for black, I think. Uh, he wants to go d7. I mean, my first thought was rook d8, but I'm wondering if I can even improve on that now. Like, whether I can go rook a5 first or something like this. Um, let's see. I think rook d8 is still the correct move. Because I really want to get the knight to d7 to blockade this pawn. I think that's quite important here. I mean, objectively, white's compensation should be enough to hold, but I think black is obviously the one pressing here. The knight d7, and he'll probably try and keep the tension, but... Okay, he decides to trade. Uh, well, it's an interesting question how he should try to defend, but I'll let him think about it, and I'll just play improving moves. Just bring my pieces to more active squares, like rook c6. I think there's a position where I can take my time. Uh, I'll go rook a6 and just try and get the rook more active. And what I really want, I think, is to get my king to uh, to d7. Although then this rook can sort of check, so maybe I'll go h5 and just you know, play on the light squares is kind of my idea. This is very committal, though, to play like this, admittedly. But yeah, takes, well... I can try to say he's weak in his position somehow, but trying to take advantage of it is not so easy. Because it seems like all the good squares my king are kind of have their problems. One thing I could do is I could actually put my rook back on a square like a8 to clear the way for the king to move. Or even play rook a7 and try to get the some rooks traded. But you know, I think I'll just keep maneuvering around first. Uh, so rook... I want to put the bishop on e5. Okay. Do I have uh, rook c4... Because I'm not sure if that actually is as good as it looks for him. Because now I can try to harass his king, and that could be a bit annoying for him all of a sudden. 
Rook B3 is played, but okay, now I can bring my gang my king to D7, which somehow feels right to me here. I also got King H4. Uh, okay, I can always bring the king back, but yeah, this is really not a good sign. I'm getting quite, uh, I'm getting completely outplayed here, which is very embarrassing. So, okay, I think I have to go Rook A4 and try to bail out into some drawing Rook ending here. Uh, rook E7 and just dead lost. Okay, I was missing everything this game. Ah, uh, yeah, the openings of black being so stupid. Just play more solidly. Um, okay, I'll go D4 again. I mean, the previous opening worked very well. So yeah, he's already deviating, which is a good sign. Um, Alright, I'll play Bishop G5 here. And just play it very solidly, I think. A like Queen B6, take, take, C3. D6, uh... It's not a move I've seen before. But I don't think it should be all that great. I mean, even just E3 or E4. E4 is more tempting. Let's play it. I mean, if it's a safe move, then why not? Okay, let's go Knight D2 and Bishop D3. Cast Knight C4 is a pretty straightforward plan. So let's just do that. I think I've had a similar structure against him before, in fact, where... I can't remember how the game went. Could have been against another opponent, actually. I go A3... I don't know, I could go A4 and just fix that pawn as a weakness, but I feel like I can kind of ignore it. Because A4 I can always play A3 myself, and I feel like that should be quite decent. Uh, okay, now I should consider maybe just C3, just put the blot on his bishop that way. But then he can take, take F5, and yeah, I completely didn't see this, which is kind of annoying. Looks like he's trying to go for it in a different version. Um, okay, it's a bit of a curious decision. Maybe Queen A4 can gain a useful tempo here. I think a good plan for me now is probably to bring my knight towards uh, towards c4. And maybe bishop b5 is a good way to start uh, working towards that. The knight a6, yeah, I thought he would do this. But, you know, knight c7, I can put the bishop on c6, knight c4. I think that's a very unpleasant cramp for black here. So bishop c6. I mean, I'm not sure if whether this was a, the bishop does all that much here. But it just kind of looks quite attractive. Um, I didn't seem to have any real tactical blows, and maybe I just have to admit that this wasn't the best plan and put the knight on c3, on e3. He does have take, he does have f5 though. I mean, f5 is kind of an annoying move, I think, but he decides to play this first. And this might be a better version for me in comparison. Because, I mean, the bishop is actually doing a good job of taking a lot of good squares from his pieces on uh, on c6. So I'm somewhat confident about White's chances here. Knight b5. Um, I mean, I'm wondering whether I can try to ignore this attack somehow, but it doesn't seem so easy. So maybe just queen to d3 then. If knight a3, c4 kind of kills his knight, but knight c7, yeah, I can even I can just play knight c4 and just keep the pressure. I feel like this game is... They're going a little bit better than some of the other ones. Like, Rook E7 really feels quite strong at this point. And just leaving him without any real good moves for his pieces. Hang on, can he do this? I thought he just blundered. Ah, he's probably sacking exchange, but Queen F3 looks pretty good in that case. And I think, yeah, my coordination is just a lot better than his here. Like, Rook B1 and Rook B7 can be a good follow-up, I think, with Bishop F6. Rook F8 is Rook D1, and actually Rook D1 is kind of a good move against most moves he can play, I think. So, yeah, he resigned. So, uh, let's play again. Okay, um, I'm going to play solid opening for a change. I'm going to play Queen's Gambit Accepted, because I think that worked against him a previous game. And, yeah, I kind of like this line where I can go Bishop F5 and you know, sack the pawn with Queen B3, C6. So, let's see what he does. Let's see, three. Uh, these lines get very sharp. Maybe I'll just bail out with e6. Just try to play normal moves. Okay, we got him out of book, so that's always fun. It's an interesting question why I should put the knight on c6 and transpose some other lines, or whether I should just, you know, play knight b6 or b c6. There are a lot of plans I can choose between. I mean, c6 kind of makes it more like a sort of Karakhan, so let's do that just for fun. Because it is a d4 player probably has not so much experience in this unusual e4 kind of pawn structure. H4, yeah, that's very blunt move, but okay, just h6 seems like a good reply. 
And yeah, I'll probably push back to h7. It's very solid and safe position for black and bishop b7. Well, it should be 70 points, go queen g4, so I might go knight d7 first and be a little more flexible here. Uh, so he goes queen g4 anyway. I'm not sure if this is entirely sound by white, but I guess knight h5 might be his idea. I don't know. Uh, well, I guess knight b6 is a healthy move. I, I can always cast along and that will make his sort of play on the queen, on the king side feel a little bit out of place. So I just go queen d7 and cast along, I think is the right plan. If a4, maybe I should just go a5 and just use a b4 square as an outpost for the knight. I'm expecting him maybe to try bishop d2 or something, just normal development. Or bishop b3 is a little more active. So knight e4, I... Is knight c5 really a problem? I don't think it is. He can go for a4, but in the worst case, I have like king b8. Because, yeah, I mean, I can even go queen c7, and I'm not sure if this really does all that much for white at the end of the day. Go knight d7 just so bishop a5 is not a problem. Uh, he could go bishop d5, maybe. But I guess knight c5 is... Well, it's a candidate for sure. Either that or I go ed5 and, you know, play that structure. But then e6 is kind of a pain. So I might just have to take and, you know, bite the bullet. But this seems pretty good, actually. Like, it feels like I might have some tactic here. He's not afraid to take yet, but he will be after he moves the bishop. So let's just go knight d3 and see what he does about that. And if bishop c3, uh, I'm not sure what to do after bishop c3, actually. I might have to play c5 and try to open up the position quickly. Because if, he give, if I give him time to go bishop e4 and trap my knight, it's obviously not good news. But now I guess I just take and, you know, play, uh, well, it's going to play c4. Seems like a good move. He does have b3, though, which is kind of annoying. Actually, it's very annoying here. Uh, if I go bishop b4, though, maybe that's all right. I mean, I just need to try and keep control of this position. And go I get my knight to d5? Oh, does he have that? Ah, oh, I just blundered like an idiot. Yeah, I've blundered so many pieces already in just a short number of games. Very sad. So I just have to go into swindle mode now. Hey, do I have queen b2? Seems like a good trick. And he should have gone bishop d6 first to avoid that, I would say. I and mean, he still has this anyway, but, you know, it's an improvement over what I had before. Uh, queen f3 is a kind of annoying move. Unless I have f6, maybe. I think it's the best try. I'm just trying to get as much value as I can for uh, for the material. Um, will I take? Yeah, I think I'll take here. I just want to try and like trade off as many pawns as I can. I think that will be my best chance. Queen g6. It appears he can do this. And yeah, he gets a lot of my pawns with this move. If I go rook c8. Yeah, he's kind of like harassing my rook everywhere, which is really a, kind of a problem. So I go rook c8, but yeah, this, this should be lost now. H6. Okay, my only chance now is just to charge my a pawn and hope for a miracle. Queen e3, eh? I mean, I can take and go e4 maybe. I'm not sure if he should have played that. I guess his pawns are pretty fast though on the king side, but I guess mine are also fast on the queen side. We'll see who wins this race. Okay, I'll go b3. Do I have rook g8 there? Oh, let's go b3 first. I think, ah, oh, bishop a3, but now I have rook here and suddenly I might have swindled him. I mean, I did study Smurden Swindling book. It's won me quite a lot of points over the over time, I have to say. So, yeah, I think he he was definitely winning. I think going into the start of the ending, but he kind of lost control. And I mean, definitely, I mean, like objectively, not necessarily practically speaking. If he goes g six instead, I think that probably just wins. But okay, he he plundered it. And uh, after this, I might stop playing actually, because like yeah, I only stop playing against his opponent. You know. I, after mid it's kind of cool. I like to still well, like do well even, you know, playing like a complete beginner in most of these games. But I do kind of want to, yeah, try and play a bit better than this, of course. So, okay, bishop b2. He wants to go bishop g7, so let's just push the pawns. Okay, king here. Just be a little bit careful. Yeah, he wants to go knight b6, f6, but okay, I can even go like take and b2 then. Um, just have to be a little cautious. 
Uh, can I take? I mean, I can take, but let's go rook here first. Doesn't really hurt anything. Uh, go here. And now we just take and simplify everything. And he resigns. Okay, I'm going to finish there against that opponent. How am I doing for, for time? Okay, it's been like a 30 minute video. Uh, well, I guess... I'm considering like whether I should make this a one hour video on like maybe play unrated games next or whether I should, uh, you know, just keep going as normal. I feel like, yeah, I can tell like I was very lucky to, to even gain any points from that. So I think I'll just play unrated for the, for the remaining games. Cause like I can tell like I am in pretty close to worst form I think I could possibly be in today. Like I feel like I'm playing like drunk. So, okay, let's play some low rate players and well, you can sort of see how, uh, you know, how I play against them. Go Benko against this guy as well, because why not? So B5, and... But I mean, one good thing also about playing, like, solo rate players, I can try to talk a bit more about the ideas behind my actual moves. Like, I was in such, like, a drunk state that I didn't uh, do it for the rated games. Uh, so the idea of delaying... Okay, that's kind of a weird move. It's sort of funny, because actually I remember the chess or combots, like Anand and Kramnik and Giri. Like, they would play exactly the same way against me, like this E4 pawn sack and A7, but... Then I didn't see for a part at knight a6 is a trick with bishop basics rook a7 to take. So it's kind of funny, but I might be the world's leading expert in this kind of position as black. I don't just I say I miss, I can take a free pawn with knight d5, you know, almost to mock me. But anyway, black is still definitely winning this. I mean, I'm already, yeah, I'm already just up a pawn for nothing. You know, knight b4, bishop a6, knight d3, and, and white is kind of toast here. Uh, I miss knight d3, but thankfully I'm still winning anyway. So I'll take queen d2. Okay, blunder with knight c3. And yeah, you can sort of see just how powerful Benko is with active peace play. So knight e c2 is a bit weird. Uh, go bishop g7 and threaten knight d5. Uh, so he goes, hang on. Did I just blunder a queen? See, I told you I was playing like a complete idiot today. Uh, yeah, because if I move the queen, he has rook b8, mate. So I have to now play with queen odds. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I they play at 1,200. I'm, like, losing to a 1,200 now. So, and he has queen b6, which I completely missed. So, so yeah, just crazy to me. Like, he just blunders the pawns out opening, and then I blunder the queen. As if to, like, try to say, no, I can play even worse. So queen b6. Uh, would have been actually just winning on the previous move, but thankfully he didn't see it. And now, yeah, I just win the queen. So, and it's a crazy game. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to title this video, but I think, like, worst chess of my life is going to be what it's eventually going to mean. So, uh, okay. Take. And, yeah, you're just going to lose a piece. So. <clears throat> yeah, let's just take everything and... Okay, now I can already pre-move, mate, pretty much. Well, not after rook h2, but so the king h1, rook f1, mate, will follow. So, yeah, now we just pre move, mate. Okay, let's try and find another opponent. Yeah, let's try not to blunder the queen this time either, because that was really embarrassing. Okay, d4, right f6. So, uh, let's play this again. I have this very love hate relationship with a Benko, because. I keep getting very bad positions out of the opening with it, but on the other hand, I also keep winning with it, so I kind of like play it just for that reason only. So anyway, let's just play like normal kind of IQP position. I mean, now the bishop I will almost wish was on d6, but this is still fine. If I free, I will probably bring it back to d6 in any case. You should have put the bishop on e2 to break the pin, because now I can think about d4 pushes. So he kind of admits a mistake, but... He's wasted so many tempi that I kind of want to try and push something very directly. With Queen E7, I want to go D4 and Bishop C3, but I don't think I'm even threatening it yet. Uh, H3. Yeah, I feel like I'm playing in a daze, but whatever. I'm just going to take and go for D4. I could have played it immediately, and I should have actually, because, yeah, Rook E4 stops it. But fortunately, my position is probably still okay, even with playing like a complete beginner once again. And yeah, now he just blunders a piece. Okay, I can actually... Can I pre-move this? No, he might go queen d8 to any pre-move. But now I win the queen for free, and... Okay, now it's easy. 
Yeah, another thing about playing these games is I get to play like a lot, much larger number of games as well. So I guess that's always uh, always fun for people to watch. And yeah, he resigned. Yeah, I'll play again. Um, yeah, I'll play B3 this time. And uh, yeah, I'll go Knight F3. And I keep changing my minus to WhatsApp I like to play. But against this, I might go G3 and just be a bit creative. Because if he lets me get in D4, I think this is a very pleasant kind of double fiend keto approach. Because I haven't played Knight C3 yet, so I kind of get some some extra options if I want with Knight D2. But okay, now I just blunders Knight A4 and just win the Bishop pair. In fact, it's even better than that because, yeah, maybe I can even go Bishop F6 and, you know, A3 feels like it should be a slightly useful move, so let's do it. And yeah, Bishop F6, Knight C5, and I mean, Black's position is kind of a mess. I would go Knight C3... Yeah, actually, I should go knight c3 after that, because queen a5, I now have b4, because he wasted tempo with queen b4, and if queen b6 is knight d5, wins a pawn. So, yeah, he really, he really messed up the opening, or rather the early middle game here. So, okay, I'll take here, you know, rook a8. What do I do after rook a d8, actually? I would have had, like, e4, I guess. Uh, but still, it's a better try to what he's playing here, because now I can already start thinking about mates, like, queen f5, bishop e4 kind of stuff. And yeah, I actually completely blundered this pawn, but luckily for me, I'm probably still winning anyway. Uh, bishop e4 was kind of stupid, just rook a8 and rook a1 as bishop f2. So yeah, this was very, very bad on my part. Like I get a winning position, as I get completely thrown away. And now he has knight g4, which I didn't even see from afar. So yeah, this is horrible. Like I'm, again, like playing, you know, not even at like a 1200 level in this game. And yeah, now Rook D8 just wins a, a piece. It's ridiculous. Uh, actually, winning the Queen, it's even worse. Man, I can't believe it. Like, I just, yeah, I've never played this badly in my life. I don't know why I'm still winning even playing here. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to win this game. But the other ones, like, I was winning even though I, yeah, have played so, so terribly in these games. Like, I think I remember, yeah, like, even when I was, like, 10 years old, I'd probably play better than this. So... And I have Rook D3, I don't even know what I do after Rook D2. I mean, resigning would be the best move, but I have too much ego to uh, to do this. Yeah, and he plays it, of course. I mean, the most I can really hope for is to fluke some sort of perpetual, but that's really a pipe dream at the moment. If 93, I'll probably go Queen E4 and hope for some miracle after that. Because actually, Knight 3, Queen 4 is purely a bluff. Because he has Knight F1, takes King here, and I have nothing after that. But hopefully it works. Hopefully it scares him enough that he doesn't play a good move. He's spending, like, yeah, a weird amount of time on every move. Like, I'm not sure what the story is there. Yeah, normally I just pre move a lot in unrated games, but yeah, of course I don't have an audience, so. What to do? I mean, Queen G4, at least it gets me into an endgame, but it's an absolutely dead lost one. But I have Queen F6, now then I get mated, so. Ah, uh, what to do? I mean, I think I have to just do this, even though it's absolutely just disgusting. Okay, if I play my moves quickly enough, maybe I can. Try to flag him before he uh, before he checkmates me. Let's hope so. Okay, uh, let's give an attack. Okay, now he's starting to go astray. Like his play in the end game has been way worse, I think, than his play was in the earlier game. Ah, I missed rook eight trade, but okay, uh, maybe I've rook d seven though. Because yeah, rook eight trade, he doesn't actually have mate. Because before I'm covering it, which I did not see from afar, but luckily I have this. I mean, it feels like he should have some sort of mating pattern, but I guess he he didn't see it. And yeah, now I can sort of like take the take the pawn f7 and take the pawn on a7, and you know I might actually be able to draw this by some miracle. Of course, he's going to flag before then, but you know that's uh, the way it goes. I guess rook b2, king g3, bishop e5, but does he have a follow up there? I mean, I guess he, he can play like rook f8, but rook g2, king f5 is kind of a nice trap. 
which he uh, falls for because he has no time and well yeah he loses but man that was crazy actually I'm not going to rematch what am I doing uh okay uh he wants to play rated but yeah I don't want to play rated anymore like I mean if I'm nearly losing these 1200 1600 there's no way I should be should be playing rated games uh, at the moment well let's see who we have next 1500 player okay I just need to play something where it's impossible for me to put a piece on pre and then I should be doing fine and win purely on technique hopefully I really want to go h4, but you know, after what I said, it would have made me look very hypocritical. So I'm going to play normal moves. b6 is weird. Go to d6, knight b5, c7 stuff. And yeah, he should have kept the option of me knight b5 with knight a6. Now it's just dead for black. I mean, he does have king f8, but you know, it's such a horrible move to play. Mm. And if king f8, yeah, I could even just play. Well, I was thinking of playing c3 anyway, so. And now he just blunders a queen. That's very nice. Okay, because he resigned quickly, I'm going to play him again, if he wants. Maybe he doesn't want to. He lost, him, what, six moves there or something. So, let's see who's next on the list. I think I should check. I can't remember if it was the raid unrated. Okay, it was unrated. Good. So, uh, yeah. I'll just accept him as a friend and continue on. Yeah, I suppose one thing, like, with making all the streams, like, one hour, like, on the one hand, yeah, maybe I should have just stopped at half an hour, but on the other hand, some people may want to see, like, yeah, how do I play against some relatively lower-rated players, so, you know. I guess we're here to please, try to please everyone. It's impossible, but I guess I may get attempt anyway. Uh, taking for even to get an unrated game. Maybe I can get an unrated bullet game. I won't be able to talk about the moves much, but given I was mostly talking about how badly I was blundering before, maybe one minute is the, the better way to go here. Just play unrated bullet. Actually, yeah, good thing I know is if I play right by my actually get back on the chess.com, like, top three leaderboard share on the homepage for, like, active players. Because one with glitches that actually if you play an unrated game, like, it then makes your inactive rating active again. So it's kind of a funny hack where, like, you could, for example, like, get a blitz rating of, like, 3-100 and just, like, play a, you know, just, like, play an unrated game and then get back on the leaderboard over and over. So I think I'm probably at chess.com again to fix at some point, but, yeah, I haven't got to yet. Should be free, yeah, very passive move, but okay, he's a low rated player, so let's just uh, do this stuff. I mean, I can even pre move all my moves at this point. Let's have queen d4 and, you know, just win stuff here. Actually, rook f2, or even bishop c5 would be interesting, but this is better. Because I don't want to allow bishop c6 with a check. And yes, yeah, so bishop c5 anyway. I could pre move it, but there's no real reason to here. Yeah. <clears throat> he's giving me free pieces. Thank you very much. Okay, now I can pretty much pre-move to victory. Unless he plays some move to stop me. Okay, now he's moving back and forth. <laughs> That's funny. Just rage quitting. <laughs> Trying to stop all my pre-moves. Not going to work, bro. Probably missed made in one, but this is good enough. Okay, let's try and find someone with a somewhat higher rating than that for the next one minute game. That's <laughs> funny, you know, get a sort of half the rating. Okay, let's go Queen H5, because why not? See if he knows how to deal with scholars, mate. Looks like he does. Okay, then. I have a feeling he's going to fall for Bishop G5 and Knight D5 tricks. Okay, he didn't completely fall for it, but I do get the Bishop pair, which is nice. Or he can go H6. Playing quite well, actually, for a 500 rated player. Okay, let's go G4. Just attack. Ah, of course, he can take the pawn. Stupid of me not to stop that. Okay, let's just hack and bluff and stuff like that. Uh, whatever, let's go for it. Actually, that tactic might kind of work. I did it, like, just purely as a bluff, but... You know, maybe... Well, okay, after this now, it definitely is a is working for me. And you have force mate, simply. Okay, it was actually quite a close game at the start. So I'll play again, see if he's up for it. Uh, hang on, you might play e5 to troll me. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll go c6 to play it as a gambit. Or he transfers back to Panolf territory.
Yeah, I used to go for B7, but yeah, now I learned this is more precise. And well, I win a pawn as well, so that's an added bonus. Queen D4. Maybe I should have gone Knight D4. That was probably a better move. Anyway, Rook B7. Okay, now I just am a pawn up in the ending, right? Bishop B3, A5 keeps things safe. Make sure to attack the Rook. Yeah, you should have kept the tension instead. And now I'm pretty solid pawn up. Okay, Bishop to D6. Now Rook is... Okay, now it's just easy. So my King is more active and I'm a pawn up. And he's going to run out of pawn moves, so yeah. Let's just run him out of pawn moves simply. Okay, let's find another opponent, because that one was yeah, a little bit straightforward. Go back some free minute, see if I can find some free minute games to play. Okay, uh, yeah, let's go for Sicilian. 55. And I have 6. It's a pretty strong pawn sack. Well, here it's not even a pawn sack. Um, now he's sacking a pawn, but I think I'm not going to take it. It's going to kind of open up the attack to my king if I do. So I'm going to just develop normally. Although I think that bishop g4 is probably a bit careless on my part. Because he should have gone h3 and then like my bishop, I would have lost the bishop pair and not really got a lot in return. But now I feel like it's sort of okay for black. I go knight d4 and double his pawns, which is quite cool. So that's taken. Well, bishop f5. Knight e4. Uh, I'll go queen d7 and go for b5 ideas. Seems like a good idea to me. I mean, my plan in these structures, I want to go for c4. And even as a pawn sack, would be interesting, but I'm going to prepare it. Uh, make sure my king is safe first. So you can think about stuff like takes and bishop c3, but with ed, I should be fine there. Queen g3, uh, maybe I go rook g8 in reply. He does have knight g5, and he gets a couple of frets, but nothing serious after bishop f6. In fact, his thinking is kind of a good sign that he is not very happy with his position. <coughs> okay, he's playing exactly what I thought he would do. Queen h4, j6, queen h5. I guess I have bishop g6 as a good defense there. <coughs> well, it's not a good thing after bishop g6. I am threatening to take b2, which is a nice additional bonus here. If rook b1 now c4 does a very strong take take and you know, I'm hitting the c2 pawn with my bishop as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm really not sure what I should do. His position is just... I mean, he just made a few little strategic mistakes. Like, this kingside attack hasn't really led anywhere and he's got double pawns around the king and... Well, ironically, it's his queen side is kind of weaker, and he's attacking his king side now. Maybe he wants to go bishop c3. But in that case, I can just take, take f6, and then I kind of just win. So, well, I'm going to grab the pawn. He could go c3 and try and trap my bishop, and... Well, I assumed f6 would be very good in reply. So, I guess that's idea, like, it's not just to take the pawn, but actually threatening to win the knight in this position. So, not really sure what white does about that. I guess you go king g2 and try meet f6 when I tree, but that is such a you know painful kind of move to have to play here. Mm. Okay, queen h4. Um, but let's go f6 anyway because I'm covering the mate on h7. He's probably going to play knight 7 anyway. So, it's his best chance, but after take, take, rook, g3, I even have, like, g6 to defend my king very comfortably. So. Yeah, c3 makes sense, but queen f5 looks like a good move. It's going for queen d3. Because rook b1, I always have bishop a3 available. Or even queen d3 is probably winning there as well, but... Uh, taking is simpler. And yeah, look like I have three of these pieces under attack at the same time here. And you lose on time. Let's we'll see if he wants to play again. Are we going for time? Okay, 50 minute mark. Play two more games. 
four. Okay, England Gambit's a bit of a weird choice, but okay. Oh, I know what he's going for. He's going for that trick where you go like uh, ED6, Knight E7, ED7 for Spec 2, but of course I know this trick and, you know, Knight C3 leaves Black Dead lost. So. Okay, uh, Knight E4 might be the best move actually to try to get the Bishop pair. So I was going to just play E4 and develop normally, but, you know, I can't, can't resist this idea now. Cast some item go Bishop F4 and just keep the pressure on this pawn. It's like a secondary idea of Knight E4. And obviously Bishop B4, C3 doesn't really help and neither does Queen A5 and... Well, I can even play C3 here because now I'm threatening Knight D6 and B4. So, yeah, Queen B6. Again, I can even just play E3. Actually, B4 is just winning a piece, uh, which... I mean, some Bishop F2, Knight F2, but luckily for me, you didn't see it on the second try. If he played Bishop F5, he could try to struggle on, but not now. Yeah, 92, and you know, watch this piece up for nothing. Bishop f5, I just go queen b3 and trade p queens. And if queen c3, just rook b1 defends the rook. So, okay, b6 is a little bit tricky, but I think I can defend it with, uh... Yeah, actually, I'm not even threatening queen c3, so... Yeah, so rook b1 in reply again. Because bishop d3, queen b c3 is a trick that he was going for. Yeah, now, now it's fine. Just rook b1 and take b7. I mean, the opening in the position is obviously very nice for my bishop pair. Not to mention I am a piece up after all, which is an added bonus. Okay, I can just about pre-move this. I'm gonna try and attack my king, and yeah, of course knight d4 was stronger, but you know, this is good enough. Hmm. Yeah, bishop d5, it's probably the best swindling attempt, but I guess I'll just make some luft for the king. I mean, he's going to try and go for knight e5, but the problem is I can always take on, uh, on e7, or for that matter, I can just play bishop c4 and trade off his one good attacker in the position. Because as I'm sure like a lot of you know, like you should trade the pieces when you're winning after all. Takes, uh, maybe queen a4. I want to do something funny like queen h4 just because it looks cool. But probably Bishop B2 is the better move in reality. Okay, he's giving me a free piece, so thanks. Take taken. Yeah, I mean, Black is completely dead at this point. He really should resign, I think, but okay. I guess I wouldn't resign if I was in his position, because it's Blitz, but yeah. I'll try and find someone else to play. Uh, let's do another three-minute game. And, uh, well, I said previously be two more, but... Well, probably this is going to be like second last. Last game ends very quickly. There might be third last. Yeah, against players below 1,000, I just go for the four move mates. And well, now I can kind of see why. Uh, let's try and find another opponent. Okay, e4, c4. Okay, I'll play Slav just to have a little variety. Yeah, exchange a little bit of a boring line, but there are ways you can try to spice it up as black. Especially in the Knight F3 version. I find a line where they go like uh, knight c3, bishop f4, e3 a bit more unpleasant personally. Because yeah, now I can sort of go after his pawn and try to set some problems this way. Knight c3, uh, can he actually do this? Because I thought that queen a2, b2 might be a good move in reply. Bishop knight d5, e6, but rook b1 is kind of annoying. So, yeah, maybe I should just take, but it makes queen b6 look kind of silly. So I'm going to keep the tension. Yeah, knight c3 is a good move in melee. I, yeah, didn't, uh, yeah, probably range queen b6 wasn't the best move. I should go knight c6, then queen b6 instead, and that would work a lot better. In any case, let's see what he comes up with. Okay, e3, now I can just take that pawn. And now it looks a lot better than before. Because take, take, I'll have bishop b4 coming in. Well, knight d2, bishop b4 probably already forces rook c1, but it's knight c6, and you know, I'm up a pawn with a good position. Hmm. If he goes rook b1 first, obviously bishop b4 would, would still have come anyway. Mm. Yeah, queen a4 is a blunder because of bishop d7. And now I'm just threatening two, uh, two big threats. Hmm.
And then I just take, and mm. you know, King E2 Bishop B5 mate is easy enough. So, okay, let's, uh, we'll play a rematch, why not? Uh, alright, I'll make this one the last game. To E4, let's play the Mora Gambit just for fun. Yeah, now I just get an improved Alapin. Go D5 and play for a quick win. There's a nice opening trap. I go knight c7, then d6 is just absolutely brutal. I go knight f3, just keep developing rapidly. Uh, h4, let's have some fun here. h5, bishop g5. Knight f6, I'm going to go e5. And if this, I go d6. And, you know, now is if he takes h5, and I mean, both black knights are more or less paralyzed. I mean, black is, is just strategically lost. If he goes f6, I might even consider a move like e5 and just, you know, sack a pawn to keep their knights out of play. I think it's well worth it. But if he plays like, I don't know, some random moves, like I can go for knight c3, knight b5, c7 is a good plan. Yeah, now like bishop d3, and you know, it just feels like this is going to break through somehow. Knight f4, I guess, is a good attempt, but g3, take, take, and we'll have queen g6 coming, but if knight d5 instead, then, you know, have bishop g6, and he's still toast. So, yeah, I mean, there's not really much that he can do in this position, I think. I mean, also after queen g6, I get 95 ideas as well, so it just goes from bad to worse for black here. Kind of expect him, well, I was expecting a queen a5, but okay, he decides to do this instead. Go 95. And one nice thing as well about this after queen, I have queen e4, and then b6 was kind of a harmful move, because it would be hitting his rook and queen f4. Okay, so I think that's a good moment to uh, to wrap up this set of games. I mean, it's true, yeah, like I played like a beginner in most of these games, to be honest, and, you know, it's not happened when you, I guess, play like with a, with a headache, but in spite of that, I still seem to, yeah, win, uh, you know, seem to do all right with the final outcome. So, uh, yeah, I guess that was, uh, well, we got the opportunity to see that, you know, one difference I guess between grandmasters and club players is well the similarity is that grandmasters can play like complete beginners as well as the game today proved but somehow the grandmasters seem to win anyway even when they play like a beginner so I guess it's just uh you know what Kyle Planker said that good players uh, are lucky uh anyway well I'm glad that you enjoyed this uh this split session and maybe I guess enjoyed my you know self-deprecation along the way uh, well, make sure to show your appreciation with a like. Uh, you know, consider subscribing as well to stay up to date with more of my chess content on YouTube. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I will see you in the next video, my dear loyal viewers.